Welcome back to another Python tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our Space Invader game that we're making with Pygame. So what we have so far is most of our objects drawn on the screen. We have our ship down at the bottom. We have our three bunkers and also our grid of enemies. What we're going to start with today is the remaining two objects, which are the missiles from the enemies and also the missile from the ship. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started. We're going to start by creating the two remaining classes. One of them is going to be the missile class, which is the object that the ship shoots. And then the bomb class is going to be the object that the enemy shoot. Well, let's go ahead and start by making the missile class. So we're going to do that down below here. And right under the bunker class, we're going to start making the missile class. So we're going to say class and then missile. We're going to pass the same thing we've been doing. So we're going to say pygame dot sprite dot sprite with an uppercase s. Next, we're going to define the init function. So we're going to say def double underscore init, double underscore, and then self. After that, we're going to say pygame dot sprite dot sprite with an uppercase s dot double underscore init, double underscore, and self. And then we're going to define its image part. And we're going to do that by saying self dot image is going to be equal to pygame dot surface and the dimensions for the missile are going to be 5 by 10. Next we're going to be making the missile green so we're going to say self dot image dot fill and then the color green. After that we're going to define its rectangle part by saying self dot rect is equal to self dot image dot get underscore rect. We're also going to be creating an update function for this class by saying def and then update. We're going to pass self and then what's going to go inside this function is self dot rect dot y plus equals and negative 10. So this update function is how we're going to move the missile once it gets created and doing plus equals negative 10 will move that missile from the bottom of the screen to the top. Okay, while we're here, let's go ahead and create the bomb class as well. And since it's going to be very similar to the missile class, what I'm going to do is highlight these lines of code, press control C to copy it, and then paste it down below. Now we can just make a few changes. So the name of this class is going to be bomb. The color of this one is going to be red. And instead of saying plus equals negative 10, we're just going to say plus equals 10. So now this update function, what it's going to do is once the bomb is created from the enemy, saying plus equals 10 will move the bomb from the top of the screen, wherever it starts, to the bottom. Before we start creating these objects, let's go ahead and make lists for both of these classes. So we're going to make a list for all the missiles. So we're going to say missile underscore list. It's going to be equal to pygame dot sprite dot group. And also one for the bomb, so we're going to say bomb underscore list is going to be equal to pygame dot sprite dot group. Now that all that's set up, we're going to create the missiles whenever the space bar is pressed. To do that, we're going to head under the while run loop. And then in the section right here where we define some of the other key presses, we're going to add another if statement that says if key square bracket pygame dot k underscore space so this is if the space bar gets pressed what we want to do is we want to create a new object from the missile class and we're going to do that by saying missile is equal to the missile class and then we're going to set its x and its y position we're going to set its x by saying missile dot rect dot x is equal to ship dot rect dot x plus 25. So what this is doing, it's setting the x position for the missile equal to the ship's x position plus 25. The reason we have to add plus 25 is because this value right here is from the top left hand corner of the ship. To get it to shoot from the middle of the ship, we include this plus 25. Next, to set the y position, we're going to say missile dot rect dot y 
it's going to be equal to the ship's y position. And we're going to get that by saying ship dot rect dot y. After it's created that new object, we're going to go ahead and add it to the missile list. We're going to say missile underscore list dot add and then missile. The next part I'm going to do is optional, but what you can do is you can add another check to set a limit on how many missiles can be created at once. To do that, you're going to say if len for length, and then we're going to check the length of the missile list, which will be the number of objects it contains. And we're going to say if that is less than 10, then we're going to create new missiles. So what this does, it limits the number of missiles that appear on the screen. I think this makes it more interesting because the players can't just spam missiles. They have to wait until either their missiles hit another object or go outside the screen. So there's one more thing we have to do before they show up on the screen. So let's go ahead and head up under the redraw function. What we need to do is say missile underscore list. First we're going to say dot update. And then we're going to say the same thing. Underscore list. But this time we're going to say dot draw and add the window variable inside the parentheses. Now let's go ahead and run our code and check it out. Now whenever I press spacebar, then I have a missile that appears. Next, let's go ahead and set up a way for the enemies to shoot bombs at us. So we're going to head back under the while run section. And we're going to start this off by saying shoot underscore chance is equal to random dot rand int so this is a random integer and we're going to choose between 1 and 100 and since we're using something from the random library we have to be sure to import it at the top so up at the very top here under the import pi game we're going to say import random now heading back down underneath this line right here we're going to say if shoot underscore chance is less than 25 what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if there's enemies still on the screen we're going to do that by saying if len for length and then enemy list and we're going to be checking to see if that's greater than zero to see if there's still enemies on the screen then we're going to define a random enemy And then this random enemy is going to be equal to random choice from the enemy list dot sprites. So what this is doing, it's taking a look at the enemy list and choosing one of the random enemies in that list. Next, we're going to create a bomb that shoots from that random enemy. We're going to do that by saying bomb is equal to the bomb class. We're going to define its x and y position just like normal. This one is going to be equal to the random enemy. Dot rect dot x plus 12. And then for the y position, we're going to say something similar. We're going to say bomb dot rect dot y is equal to the random enemy's y position. plus 25. Okay, the reason for the extra amounts, this plus 12 gets it into the middle of the enemy, and this plus 25 gets it to shoot from the bottom of the enemy. After it's created the object, we're going to add it to the bomb list by saying bomb underscore list dot add and then bomb. Next, we're going to head under the redraw function. And I'm going to copy these two lines and paste them down below. And then we're just going to change them from missile to bomb. Okay, let's go ahead and check out our code to check for errors. Okay, everything looks good. So we see that we have bombs shooting from the enemies. And it's just choosing a random enemy from the list to shoot a bomb from. 
Okay, next let's go ahead and set up collision so that if a missile or a bomb hits a object on the screen, it does something. So let's go ahead and head back down and start working on that. We're going to start off by saying for missile in missile list. We're going to check to see if that missile goes off the screen. To do that, we're going to say if missile dot rect dot y is less than negative 10. So this means that the missile went off the screen. What we're going to do is remove the missile. So we'll reference the missile list dot remove and then we'll remove the missile. Next we're going to check to see if any of those missiles collide with any of the enemies. So we're going to say for enemy in enemy list if missile dot rect dot collide rect with enemy dot rect. So this means that the rectangle from the missile collides with the rectangle from the enemy. We're going to remove both the enemy and also the missile. So we'll say missile list dot remove and then missile. And then we'll also say enemy list dot remove and enemy. And we'll also do something similar whenever the missiles hit part of the bunker. We'll say for bunker in bunker list if missile dot rect dot collide rect. And then we're checking to see if it collides with the bunker. So we'll say bunker dot rect. Okay, if that happens, we're going to remove both of them. So I'm just going to copy this line from right here. And then I'm going to copy it one more time and just make a few changes. So this time we're going to change this to the bunker list and we're going to remove bunker. Okay, so at this point let's go ahead and stop and check our code to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. So for now what we're checking is to see if the missiles from the ship destroy the bunkers and also the enemies. So we'll test the bunkers first. Okay, so my missile destroys parts of the bunker. And next we'll see if it destroys enemies. Okay, so everything's looking good so far. What we're going to do next is something similar for the enemy bombs. We're going to say if those bombs touch the bunker or the ship, we're going to remove some objects. And we're going to start this down below what we just wrote. We're going to start out by saying for bomb in bomb list. We're going to check to see if it collides with the ship. So we'll say if bomb dot rect dot collide rect. And we're checking to see if it collides with the ship. Okay, if that happens, we're going to remove the bomb. So we'll say bomb list dot remove and then bomb. And at the same time, we're going to subtract one from the ship's lives. So to do that, we're going to say ship dot lives. And let me just go ahead and double check to make sure this matches for the class. Okay, so in the ship class, I defined it as live. So I'm going to just go ahead and add an S to it so it matches down below. So for ship.lives, we're going to say minus equals 1. Next, we need to go through all the bunker parts and see if those got hit. So we'll say for bunker in bunker list if bomb.rect.collide.rect. And we're checking to see if this collides with a bunker piece. In that case, we're going to remove the bomb and the bunker. So I'm going to copy this part. And then paste it one more time and just make a few changes. So this time it's going to be the bunker list. And we're removing a bunker. 
Let's go ahead and check our code and see if everything's working. When I try to run the code, there's an error, and I just forgot to indent these two lines of code. Let's go ahead and try again. Now I see that the enemy bombs are destroying the bunker. Okay, good. So whenever the bombs are hitting the ship, then the bombs are disappearing. Okay, so I think this is a good stopping point for this video. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and finish up this game by getting the enemies to move back and forth, and also adding some finishing touches. For now, though, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one. <laughs>